Goodwill is a nonprofit organizational chain of thrift stores that opened in 1903. Thank you for your suggestion. Good deals, good cause, Goodwill. Good deals, good cause, Goodwill. Have you shopped Goodwill lately? Our selection and low prices on clothing for the whole family will surprise you. Goodwill adds new merchandise every day. It's never the same store twice. Shop the Goodwill Boutique for designer clothing at fantastic savings. No one will know you save so much. That's Goodwill. Good deals, good cause, eight convenient locations. Goodwill, good deals, good cause, Goodwill. Goodwill Industries was founded in 1902 by the Reverend Edgar James Helms a Methodist minister who came to head the Unitarian Church's multi-denominational Henry Morgan Memorial Chapel in Boston's South End slums. At the time, the chapel's attendees were largely alcoholics and indigents lured into the church by the smell of hot coffee and stew. When the chapel was full, the doors were locked and the visitors treated to a fire and brimstone sermon. However, Helms disapproved of this tactic for reform. Instead, he began using the baptistery tank to pipe in water to showers installed in the basement in order to clean up his charges. Next, he made space for a nursery where working mothers could leave their children. Helms then issued an appeal for used clothing to give to the poor and hired poverty-stricken seamstresses to repair the clothing before selling it cheaply to the needy. This self-help system expanded with the donation of 1,000 burlap bags from a coffee importing firm and also grew to include the donation, repair, and resale of used furniture and other items. The effort became institutionalized under the name of the Morgan Memorial Industries and Stores. However, Helms drew criticism from some professional social workers of the day who objected that Helms did nothing to check that his charity employees were the most worthy of help. Moreover, the Unitarian Church eventually withdrew its support of the project. Helms subsequently found sponsorship from the Methodist Church and his next self-help effort manifested itself in Brooklyn where the Goodwill Industries name was born. By 1919, Goodwill Industries training shops and stores had opened in Cleveland, Denver, Los Angeles, and Brookline, Massachusetts, and the Methodists were planning to invest $305,000 for plants in New York, Buffalo, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, St. Paul, and other cities. The plan called for 30 of these centers, training 120,000 people a year and spending two to three million dollars annually for wages. An important new manpower supply was tapped in the numbers of disabled servicemen returning from World War I. Skilled workers taught the newcomers the best and quickest ways to repair donated materials, and when they became skilled themselves, the pupils were recommended to commercial shops and factories. The store for the sale of remade articles served a double purpose, offering training as salespersons, stenographers, and bookkeepers. Helms took his message overseas in 1926 when he began a world tour, laying the ground for what was to become Goodwill Industries International. He traveled to Europe, the Middle East, Japan, Korea, Ceylon, and the Philippines. More than 60 cities in the United States and various communities in foreign countries had Goodwill Industries institutions by 1932. A 1930s article in a local paper described wage earners as men and women with nervous diseases, mental quirks, so social complexes and maladjustments, paralysis victims, capable of training, maybe in the use of feeble limbs, not really politically correct by today's standards. The Great Depression changed Goodwill's direction. 
people with disabilities did not become the major focus of its work until the mid-1930s, when mass unemployment convinced the organization it needed to restrict its services to a smaller segment of the population. When Goodwill Industries celebrated its 50th anniversary in 1952, there were 101 plants in the United States. In 1951, the company took in $13.6 million in revenue and paid $8.2 million in wages. Of the 17,545 handicapped men and women employed by Goodyear that year, about 30% had found full or part-time jobs in private industry by May of 1952. Many others had established their own shops. The Goodwill agencies were 90% self-supporting and completely non-denominational, although some were still receiving financial aid from Methodists. During this time, the main donations to Goodwill consisted of clothing, shoes, furniture, repairable household appliances, toys, and books. The Los Angeles chapter was the biggest operation, employing some 1,500 people and doing more than a million dollars worth of business annually. It was followed by Detroit, Boston, Chicago, San Francisco, Milwaukee, Denver, St. Louis, and Cincinnati, which had the best equipped physical rehabilitation centers. By 1968, the Goodwill Industries Workshop Network had reached 135, employing over a year's time a total of 50,000 handicapped persons. A survey found that the percentage of employees with some neurological, mental, or social affliction had risen to 42% in 1966, compared to 32% in 1960. Some workshops began to lay off handicapped workers because of the scheduled increase in the federal minimum wage to $1.80 an hour in 1969. Although sheltered workshops employed the handicapped could pay as little as half of the regular minimum wage, the U.S. Department of Labor was requiring that they match the percentage increase on all of their wages. By the 1990s, Goodwill Industries was again concentrating on a wider segment of the needy population, not only the disabled, but those socially and economically disadvantaged. It was, by the middle of the decade, serving people with a range of barriers to employment, including lack of education, welfare dependency, a criminal record, and advanced age. The largest single group of people served by the organization in the mid-1990s were those with vocational disadvantages such as welfare dependency, illiteracy, a history of criminal behavior, or past substance abuse. The federal state vocational rehabilitation system, the public welfare system, and the United States Department of Labor together accounted for more than half of the yearly referrals to Goodwill. Other individuals were referred privately and through state mental health offices. Goodwill organizations in many communities established basic skills programs offering tutoring and reading and basic math. Goodwill's retail revenues continued to grow steadily. It was a full-line discount retailer with a special emphasis on clothing, but donations being sold also included linens, furniture, shoes, small appliances, hardware, housewares, collectibles, books, and recordings. Unsaleable donated items were being sold as scrap material or in wholesale markets. In 1993, Goodwill Industries processed close to 700 million pounds of donated textiles, and more than 99% of it was sold either in Goodwill retail stores or on the salvage market for other uses. Some member organizations have become involved in materials recycling, sorting, and sometimes processing materials like paper, aluminum, and glass. In 1995, Goodwill employed nearly 52,500 people in its own facilities, retail stores, and industrial contract programs. Its member organizations in North America collectively served more than 130,000 people in vocational and rehabilitation programs. 
Of these, nearly 25,000 found competitive jobs in the community as a result of the Goodwill training. There were also 1,427 retail outlets in 1995. A 1994 survey found that five out of every six dollars in Goodwill Industries income went for program spending, which ranked the organization in the top 10 social service charities in the United States in that category. Goodwill affiliates contributed to the parent organization on a purely voluntary basis. As a way to attract a new kind of shopper, Goodwill Industries launched its e-commerce website in 1999. By 2006, Goodwill Industries International had a network of 207 member organizations in the United States, Canada, and 23 other countries. As of July 2011, there were 164 full Goodwill members in the United States and Canada. The clothing and household goods donated to Goodwill are sold in more than 3,200 Goodwill retail stores on its internet auction site, shopgoodwill.com, and eBay by a number of its regional stores. Most of the items on shopgoodwill.com are either considered collectible or more valuable than their auction price, and bidding can be fierce. When merchandise cannot be sold at a normal Goodwill store, it is taken to the Goodwill outlet or bargain store, where items are sold mostly by weight, with prices ranging from $0.49 cents to $1.89 per pound, depending on the location. The wide selection and massive discounts on a variety of household goods typically attract a fervent following of regular customers, some of whom make a full-time living buying and reselling goods. There are also many vendors who buy this merchandise in bulk and then send the merchandise to third world countries. Goodwill has also come under scrutiny a 2013 article on Watchdog.org reported that Goodwill's tax returns showed that more than 100 Goodwills pay less than minimum wage while simultaneously paying more than $53.7 million in total compensation to top executives. Douglas Barr, former CEO of Goodwill of Southern California, was the highest paid Goodwill executive in the country. He received a total compensation worth $1.2 million, including a base salary of $350,000, plus bonuses worth $87,000, retirement benefits of $71,000, and $637,000 in deferred compensation after serving as CEO for 17 years. Today, there are over 4,245 locations in 17 countries. The company generates over $7.4 billion in revenues each year. Not bad for a nonprofit organization. Thank you for watching. If you like this content, and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Thanks.